The Making of the New Complete Dog Book I think we can all agree that there is something sacred in the bond between people and their dogs. For many, this means regular visits to great houses of worship and lots of praying, strange exacting rituals, and the never-ending quest for perfection. It's not too much of a stretch to say that for many people, life with dogs is a religion. And this is their Bible. The Complete Dog Book is the longest continually published book of its kind in history. It debuted at the same time the stock market crashed and plunged the world into the Great Depression, the fall of 1929. At that time, it was called Purebred Dogs, the breeds and standards as recognized by the American Kennel Club. The first reference I could find was in the November 1929 issue of the AKC Gazette, and it was a two-line classified. It was plain and simple, just a collection of breed standards. The preface noted that dog lovers had complained that there existed no official publication giving standards of the different recognized breeds in this country. This book is an answer to that complaint. It had an unadorned green cover and black and white photos, and not a lot of them. The standards were much shorter, and there were 89 organized alphabetically within groups, and that is the format that has stayed to this day. Still, came in at 330 pages and cost $5, which was a huge investment during the Depression. Over the years, there were several updates as more breeds gained recognition. In 1938, it was christened the Complete Dog Book. At that time, it had grown to 750 pages. Later editions added sections on health and care, which was in 1938, training in 1942, and then more and more on AKC background and history, and sports other than confirmation. The golden anniversary issue added some color plates, but the art was still primarily black and white, and the tone still traditional and authoritative, through to the 2006 edition. This is 2006, and you can see it doesn't look very much different from um, the original version. For the update in 2012, we decided to spice the book up, making the tone less formal and the pages more eye-catching to appeal to the tastes of a modern audience. In my mind, it was like turning a venerable old text into an illuminated manuscript. Since we didn't have an order of monks to bring the pages to life, we had to gather photos, nearly 2,000 of them. Half made it into the book. All images were donated, and they had to be technically up to publication standards, aesthetically pleasing, and showing dogs who are excellent examples of the breed. In addition to stack shots, we showed them working, lounging, and playing. Great emphasis was put on how on photos that showed how a breed's traditional role can be adapted to the modern world. This is one of my favorites. It's Skipper Key in a cadaver search on a river. They found a body trapped 142 feet below the surface. This echoes their history as barge dogs in Belgium. Another thing that we did was lighten the tone. Um, and for this, we worked closely with the parent clubs. We asked them for 500 word introductions with historical and form and function notes, and most importantly, insight on life with dogs, things that only people who know a breed well can tell you. It was my favorite part of the project because a lot of the fanciers are incredibly well-educated and witty. Here are some of the highlights. On the Dog de Bordeaux's slobber, they said you learn to carry a towel and deal with it. On the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, they are not reliable to obey commands if they are busy chasing butterflies. On golden retrievers, may not be the best choice for the compulsively tidy. Introductory pages stress programs that engage dogs and their people in all that the AKC has to offer. For example, um, earth dog, various different kinds of hunting, star puppy and CGC, and the therapy dog titles. We also did a lot on agility, barn hunt, dock diving, rally, every one of the sports. And what we 
wanted to do, or the, fo- the photos that we gave preference to, showed non-traditional breeds doing these sports. So agility dogs that are that you wouldn't normally think of um, to do that activity. One change was particularly inspired. Puppies. We included a vast number of puppies, pictures of every breed. Up front, we had a section on choosing a breeder, and we framed that as a series of red flags and green lights, things that a breeder might say to you or that you might see when you go to visit the site um, that will either say that this is a good person to take a dog from or someone that you might want to be wary of. Each breed section had a picture of a young pup. We originally wanted two puppies, eight weeks and six months, but we couldn't fit them in as into the design so we went with the younger ones this is very useful because you don't often get to see puppies of breeds other than your own and the other thing that's important about this since shelters use the book it can help in making distinctions between a black lab puppy and a connie corso puppy and that's very important for a shelter to know It was all aimed at presenting a friendly face to newcomers while still offering the wisdom accumulated by people who have spent their lives devoted to the breed. It was a delicate balance, and I think we achieved it. Now I'd like to answer a question that's been on everyone's mind, and one that I've answered since I started this project, I I can't tell you how many times. Why a book? It's true that we live in a digital world and that everything is on a screen and everything is very fast and immediately at our fingertips. So why a book? Well, for one thing, the previous edition was very well received. It earned an award, it sold well despite market forces and a serious printing issue. In the 21st edition, there was a problem with the bindings and the covers fell off many of the books. This led to a number of bad reviews on Amazon, and as anyone who's ever been in the book business can know, um, an Amazon bad review can be devastating. Despite that, the publisher reports that they printed 9,000 copies and sold them all. And that really is not bad, considering that from 1929 to 2006, the book sold a total of 2 million copies. So this edition made a respectable showing. And the binding has been upgraded for the 22nd edition, and preliminary Amazon reviews are all five stars. In fact, I'll I'll direct you to one that we just found today. Um, This book is massive. It's like the Bible for dog lovers. Love it. So most of them are like that. But there's another important reason the complete dog book matters today. And to explain this, I'll turn to the pages of our good book itself. People say print is dead, and to be relevant, you need to be a master of cyberspace. And that's true. And to compete in that world, you need to be swift and focused as a desert hound, brilliant and turn on a dime agile as a herding dog, tenacious and scrappy as a terrier, and cute and winning as a toy puppy. But in addition to its modern role, AKC has another face and another vital duty that becomes more important as civilization becomes faster and more fragmented. We're the guardians of a great tradition, and the complete dog book is part of that tradition. Generations of children grew up reading this book and dreaming of the dogs that were going to be in their lives in the future. So this is where we belong. And at more than 900 pages and six pounds, the book is a great anchor. Um, I'd just like to close with um, acknowledging all of the people that were involved in this. It was a huge undertaking, which would not have been possible without the assistance of the 200 plus parent clubs. They were very generous with their time and materials and knowledge, and they are wonderful as well as many people on the AKC staff, including Gina DiNardo, um, Mary Beth O'Neill, and Daphne Strauss, um, but there were so many others who contributed uh, greatly. So thank you for your time, and have a good day. <laughs>